All right, so this video is going to be all about Charles's law. And uh, remember, we have four basic physical properties of gases. We have pressure, volume, temperature, and amount in moles, or amount of gas particles present. So what Charles' law says is that if you keep the pressure of the gas and the amount of the gas constant, then the uh, volume of the gas is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas, and vice versa. So that means that if I were to increase the temperature of a gas, uh, that increase in temperature would lead to an increase in uh, volume. If that is, if you keep the pressure and the amount constant. So this is actually, you know, pretty intuitive. Uh, I mean, you can try this one at home. If you fill up a balloon with air and hold it over a pot of boiling water, uh, that balloon is going to expand. It's going to increase its volume. Uh, on the other hand, if you were to dip a balloon in ice water, then you would see a, uh, a compression. You would see uh, the, the balloon shrinking down. So, <clears throat> basically what's going on at the, uh, at the molecular level is when you raise the temperature of the gas, uh, you're increasing the thermal energy. And thermal energy is a type of kinetic energy, which is the energy associated with motion. So that means you have the, particles, uh, the gas particles moving around uh, more quickly. And the only way for the pressure to remain constant, despite those particles moving around quickly, is uh, for the volume to, to give out and expand. So that's basically uh, what's going on um, with Charles's law. So let's see if we can't uh, come up with a couple of equations that can help us uh, solve some problems. So the volume, as I said, is directly proportional to the temperature. So that means that V is proportional to T. Okay? But I don't really like that proportionality symbol, so I'm going to turn this into an equation. And I'm going to say that the volume V is equal to some constant of proportionality that I'll just call K times the temperature. And if we divide both sides by temperature, uh, we'll end up getting the important result, which is V over T equals K, a constant. So remember, this, this all, uh, all of these conditions are satisfied when uh, the pressure and the amount of the gas are constant. So keep that in mind. So V over T is a constant. So that means if I have two different conditions where I have two different volumes and two different temperatures of the same gas, then the quotient of the volume and the temperature is always going to be the same constant. So in other words, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, which is just equal to the same constant. So let's go through a, uh, a problem uh, dealing with uh, Charles's law. So suppose you have a gas, and this gas is occupying 2,000 liters, so I'm going to put V1 equals 2,000 liters. And suppose the temperature of this gas, when it's 2,000 liters, is 0 degrees Celsius. If I were to increase the temperature of this gas to 100 degrees Celsius, so if I were to increase the temperature, T2 equals 100 degrees Celsius, so it goes from 0 to 100, uh, then what would be the volume of the new gas? So how much is this, to what volume is this gas going to expand if I increase the temperature from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 uh, degrees Celsius? So. Let's, uh, let's set up our equation. We have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And our unknown is V2. That's the one that we need. So to get V2 all by itself, I'm going to multiply uh, both sides of this equation by uh, T2. And I'll end up getting that V2 is equal to V1 times T2 over T1. And now it's just a matter of uh, plugging in the values. 
So uh, I'm just going to plug it in. Um, we'll just put it down here. V2 is equal to, let's see, V1, that's 2,000 liters. T2 is uh, 0 degrees Celsius, but we can't put 0 in here. That wouldn't make sense. That would just give a whole, that would give a volume of 0. And the reason why is because uh, anytime you're working with gas laws, it doesn't matter which, you need to use absolute temperatures. So the, the temperature scale that you have to uh, convert to is the Kelvin scale. So to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, remember we just add 270, 273 degrees. So 0 degrees Celsius is actually 273, 270, whoops, 273 Kelvins. It's actually 273.15, but for the purposes of this video, we'll just call it 273. So that's, uh, that's V1. That takes care of V1 and, uh, and T2. So now we have to divide this whole thing uh, by T1, which is 100 degrees Celsius. And if we convert that also to Kelvin, we would get uh, 373 Kelvins. And it looks like our Kelvins cancel and that leaves us nothing uh, with nothing but liters and the new volume let's see I think I calculated it where did I put that okay yes uh, the new volume is V2 is equal to 2.73 uh, times 10 to the third liters so about 2700 liters so that means that uh, the volume of the gas uh, increased by about 700 liters and which makes sense. Um, th this is one of the uh, ones of, one of those kinds of problems that you can intuitively check. If my V2 is is not uh, greater than V1, at least by a little bit, then I know I messed up because, like I said, of Charles' law, the directly proportional. An increase in temperature should always lead to an increase in volume. So there you go. There is Charles' law.